Welcome, Facebook fans. Starting now. now. And we have to really escalate the noise we make so that we'll be heard. Welcome to Gay USA. Uh, by, I'm Andy Hum in New York, where breathing has become more difficult. I will take this off for the program so that you can read my lips. <laughs> I'm Ann Northrup. Breathing, we can't even see. It's, uh, it's terrible here. Terrible. It, it is terrible. But luckily, our guest is not here. She's in Portland, Oregon. And that, to kick off Pride Month, we are honored to have with us uh, this week, Martha Shelley, a pre-Stonewall lesbian activist who played a key role in LGBTQ organizing in the wake of the rebellion and before, actually. Her new book is We Set the Night on Fire, Igniting the Gay Revolution. Uh, the Human Rights Campaign has declared, it's about time, a state of emergency in response to what they call real, tangible, and dangerous threats to LGBTQ communities, not news to viewers of this program. No, but news that they've declared it, and so we'll go into a little more detail about what's happening this week in the state of emergency. But uh, there is some good news, too, which we're always happy to bring you. In a sweeping ruling, a federal judge has barred Florida from banning gender-affirming care for minors, and it may go beyond that, too. And a, hold on to your seats, a Trump-appointed federal judge ruled that Tennessee's ban on drag shows is unconstitutional. I, I like these stories because it gives me hope. Uh, however, Texas has enacted a new slew of anti-LGBTQ bills including a ban on local LGBTQ rights ordinances. That's so yesterday. Lots of fights over LGBT inclusion in school curricula uh, have broken out in two California towns. Uh, at least. There may even be three. But, it's, uh, but these are literally fist fights. Uh, the Department of Defense uh, has capitulated and says drag shows are not appropriate for the military. Ronald Reagan, Ronald Reagan once hosted one in the movie. Well, what, what about South Pacific? Oh, for God's sakes. I mean, <laughs> they've been very popular over, over the, the centuries. Yeah. The political opposition uh, in Iran has come out for LGBTQ rights. <laughs> but our Defense Department has not. Uh, well, they have, but they, you know, uh, Jerusalem pride is bigger than ever amidst threats from the far right. So this HR human rights campaign, state of emergency, uh, it's been issued in response to what they call multiplying threats, uh, to our community, which are not just perceived. They say they are real, tangible, and dangerous. According to CEO Kelly Robinson. Many resulting in violence, forcing families to uproot their lives and flee to safer states, a tidal wave of homophobia and transphobia, uh, right-wing anti-LGBTQ bigots are galvanizing hate, and they note this is just going to build. Well, there were a couple that particularly caught my eye this week that so enraged me that I wanted to just... Uh, get on a plane, get out of the uh, wildfire smoke and go ring a few necks around the country. Uh, in Montana, in the Butte Silver Bow Library, uh, canceled a history speech by a trans woman who is Native American. She wanted to talk about uh, the history in Native communities uh, of Two-Spirit people and and this was going to be a history talk in the library. And the library canceled it uh, because of the state anti-drag law. That was their excuse for canceling this history speech. Uh, and then the library went on to declare Pride Month. 
<laughs> and then there was one other that also enraged me. Uh, a Target store in Lake Park, Florida, refused, gay men came in and wanted to buy a little uh, rainbow onesie for their uh, toddler from Target's pride display. And the store refused to sell it to them on the grounds that even though some of this stuff is still on display, they're not selling it. Uh, and in Texas, a woman there went into a Target store and wanted to buy a book that was somehow LGBTQ themed and was on display, and they refused to sell that to her. Well, we're going to show you how things are getting out of hand, even in Los Angeles and North Hollywood, where there were uh, dueling demonstrations outside the Satakoy Elementary School over an assembly where there was a reading of the book, the great big book of families that included us. So let's go to the videotape on that. And violence breaks out during protests over a North Hollywood Elementary School's planned Pride event. Supporters say the event at Satakoy Elementary promoted inclusion and diversity. Critics claim it was inappropriate for kids. Chris Wolf reports from North Hollywood with what's at the center of the controversy. <laughs> Demonstrators on opposing sides of a social and educational issue clashed outside a North Hollywood Elementary School Friday. <laughs> the Los Angeles Unified School District had announced that an assembly was planned for all students K through 12 involving the recognition of gay and lesbian families in a book called The Big Book of Families. That sparked outrage among dozens of parents connected to Satakoy Elementary who held a demonstration. Pride advocates launched a counter demonstration and confrontations became violent at times. There is one sentence in the book. It is many pages, but the one sentence says some families have two moms and some have two dads. It also talks about some families ha are raised by their grandparents. Some are raised with just one parent. So it's one reference um, to the existence of LGBTQ families. Protesting parents we spoke with say they are not against the gay community with many adding that they have family and friends in the LGBTQ community. We as parents have the right to be able to determine when and where the appropriate setting is for our children to uh, learn about that. What are you going to tell my child when he comes to you and says, you know, I have a mommy and a daddy. What does it mean to have two daddies? My mommy was pregnant with me. Which daddy was pregnant? How did the daddy have a baby? And we're just uh, giving a message of family acceptance, of uh, diversity. My message is that our kids are too young to talk about sex-related issues in an elementary school. <sighs> Harry, and, and those protesters did outnumber the counter-protesters at this one. A pride flag was burned. The, the assembly did go on. But the staff was threatened and abused over this. These people are violent and vile. Uh, extremely. And a lot of the violence is coming from not the in, uh, local parents, but from Proud Boy types who are now going in roving bands to uh, schools uh, around the country to, uh, pr to provoke violence. Uh, and you saw some of it break out there. I assume that the parents who said they were parents are parents, but uh, it's not just parents. It is uh, violent protesters who are doing this very deliberately to cause trouble. And it happens in Manhattan, too. It happens everywhere. Uh, this thing called Libs of TikTok alerts people everywhere in the country anytime anything LGBTQ is happening and triggers a protest, which the Proud Boys or other right-wing groups, and these people, we've met them, we encountered them at the community center in New York. They're nuts. I mean, most of them are anti-vaxxers as well. I mean, they're just, they're, it's a cult. Well, I don't think it's just uh, uh, cult crazies. I think the Proud Boys are a very organized uh, white nationalist, right-wing group who are out to destroy uh, anything in the country that does not comport with their views. Oh. Moms for Liberty has just been labeled a, a hate group by the Southern Poverty Law Center, which tracks these things. 
it is it it is at all levels there because the lies and the provocation from uh, media, right wing media, is bringing everybody out, and and it is right for the HRC to uh, declare a state of emergency because this is real, and you see it all over. And in uh, let's go. Sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry. In Carlsbad, California, you had a vice principal who's sort of from the religious right who went on an anti-LGBTQ rant. So students protested there, and we have a video report about that. Students in the North County took part in a school-sanctioned walkout over the district and the city voting against raising the pride flag. And Fox 5's Misha DeBono joins us live outside of Carlsbad High School with what those students are hoping for now. Misha. Yeah, hi, Andrew and Maria. This is a pretty large crowd of students here this morning rallying, making their voices heard, trying to force the district to raise the pride flag in support of these LGBTQ plus students in celebration of Pride Month, which starts in a matter of days. Your religion is not a cure for my existence. Dozens of LGBTQ plus students at Carlsbad High School staged a walkout Tuesday morning in protest over the Carlsbad School District's refusal to fly the pride flag at district headquarters during Pride Month. I felt that it was an attack to LGBTQ plus students and they make made excuse after excuse saying, oh, well, we have to consult with legal team. The vote, they say, was announced last minute and without district-wide input. And it comes after controversy erupted last week in the district when a video surfaced of Carlsbad High School's vice principal, Ethan Williams, speaking to members of his church about the school district's strategic diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging plan. For someone who is a grown man who has a job at the school, I find it almost like pathetic that he just, something that is just this simple, just like raising a flag for one month to show like support for a whole like group of students. But other students like Carter Lowe, who says he supports his LGBTQ plus classmates, he does not want the curriculum changed and he supports Vice Principal Williams. He shows his First Amendment right to speak and he spoke freely and I believe what he says is true and I think that it's the way it should be as far as the way that the curriculum should not be um, gendered. So what's next? These students say they are not giving up. They're going to be writing letters and emails to the district here, hoping that they will, in their words, just get that flag up. That is their main goal and change their community. Now, we did reach out to the district. At this time, we did not hear back. From Carlsbad, Misha DeBono, Fox 5 News. It's not just these uh, schools. Uh, these attacks are taking place all over the country. In uh, it, There really is a war on pride. Uh, hideous online attacks. The U.S. Navy, Major League Baseball, NASCAR uh, have had to delete their pride posts because they're getting so viciously attacked with uh, storms of uh, online criticism. They don't have to delete them. They need some backbone. And look, it's even well, they need, or they could block them and keep their own posts yeah. up. We do a lot of celebration of, of pride in New York, but it's not as if we're so great on these issues. The New York City schools just have one staffer on LGBTQ issues for 1.1 million students. And there's a bill in the state legislature to require middle and high schools to include instructions on the contributions and ways of life of LGBTQIA people in appropriate places in the curricula, and it's stalled in liberal New York unless we push it through this month. I was uh, uh, interested to see the video that was circulating of a, uh, a school board meeting in somewhere in Florida where uh, the school board members are all anti-LGBTQ and were attacking the teachers and uh, kids and everything. And one teacher got up and said, uh, look, I teach math. I don't have time to teach your kid to be gay. <laughs> it was great. Uh, but that's and then, uh, and then in Glendale, California, at a school district meeting on just recognizing June as Pride Month, as they had many times before, um, there were big demonstrations outside on both sides. Three people were arrested. Inside, most people spoke of ex of LGBTQ acceptance. But the Proud Boys were part of the anti-LGBTQ demo. This is a district where Adam Schiff is the congressman, and he called the violence horrific and said we won't go back. 
and the Pride Resolution was passed unanimously. Well, and in uh, California, the Temecula Valley uh, School Board vetoed a lesson on Harvey Milk because someone uh, described him as a pedophile. <laughs> That's their word for you know everybody they don't like. Well, Governor a- Newsom said it was an offensive statement from an ignorant person. And then let's go to Ohio, where um, at a, a Catholic church, St. Raphael's, the priest there preached against the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence, saying they are defaming the name of every Christian here on earth. And a trans person named Avery confronted him. We are under attack. Look at the Los Angeles Dodgers defaming the name of every Christian here on earth. It just burns a hole in my heart, angers me and embitters me, and it should you. We should feel that sting and fight against it. It just, oh, I don't want to give these people a name. I don't want to give them that much credit. I want to cry. And I just say that queer and trans people also carry the Holy Spirit. And that was really painful to hear. That was really hurtful. I only come, I live in Georgia with my wife now. You baptized me. I did. I know you're talking about the Sisters of Indulgence, and I understand that from the outside it looks like they are defaming Catholic faith, but they only do that, they only take There are queer children here. The spirit of God moves through all people. I will go. Wow. Very interesting. More people need to stand up. And that stuff happens. Speak up. Don't sit there silently. Uh, but what courage it took for him to uh, go to the microphone and object and talk about how hurtful that Christian well, leader was. Well, let's talk about the courage of a federal judge in Florida. Uh, he barred the state from enforcing its ban on gender affirming care for minors. U.S. District Judge Robert Hinkle, a Clinton appointee, he said Uh, The policy was targeted at a discreet and insular minority, which means we got to give them heightened protection. So it's a big win for uh, GBLTQ legal advocates and defenders. His decision could apply to the restrictions on adult care as well. He said in the decision, gender identity is real. And he said the plaintiffs are motivated by love for trans kids. That is not the state's motivation and he calls the law an intrusion on parental prerogatives. And he is not the only judge who came out with a good ruling this week. Uh, uh, Judge Parker in Tennessee, uh, another federal judge, has ruled that the anti-drag law in uh, Tennessee is unconstitutional as a breach of free speech protections. Uh, Yes. I mean, this case was brought by Friends of George's, but that produces drag-centric performances, comedy sketches, and plays with no age restrictions. And the law would have banned adult cabaret performers from public property anywhere that minors might be present. Parker said a female custom could be arrested. Uh, The judge wrote that the law was unconstitutionally vague, substantially overbroad, and that it encouraged discriminatory enforcement. He says, whether some of us like it or not, the Supreme Court has interpreted the First Amendment as protecting speech that is indecent but not obscene. A Trump-appointed judge. Uh, Yeah, and, you know, we have said all along, uh, I remember in the marriage cases, in these uh, cases, we've always said that these laws are all unconstitutional. And in the marriage cases 20 years ago, uh, we or 10 years ago, we watched uh, various courts strike down the anti-same-sex marriage laws that uh, the right wing tried to pass. And I am hopeful that that's what's going to happen here, that we're going to go through this same cycle 
of the right wing trying to gain power by scapegoating us, exploiting people's fears and misunderstandings, and then and passing these laws. And then one by one, slowly, uh, we strike them down in court. Uh, we'll let's, see. Uh, we... Let's get the long view from our guest. Can we bring yes. in our guest now? Uh, fingers crossed. We were having some technical issues. Martha, can no, you? I can't hear you. Uh, Rich, can you help Martha hear, hear us? I can't hear a thing. Uh, we're trying. Hold on, hold on. Rich, uh, do you have do you have earbuds in? No. Do you have earbuds you can put in? I don't know what to do. Well, you sit there for s wait. We're trying to fix it, Rich. Do you have, yeah, do you have earbuds? Can you put them in? No. Or any ear headphones? Or turn, turn the sound up on your computer? Well. Headphones. Headphones, no. Well. Um, we apologize. We, apo we definitely apologize to Martha and to the viewers. Uh, we will see if we can fix it uh, for this show. Don't go away. And uh, this is Martha's not, book. Okay. Martha She's going to look for headphones. This is Tonight, the book. The Gay Revolution. <laughs> we will go on with the laundry list of uh, horrors and some good news in the world this week. And if we can get Martha hooked up properly before the end of the show, we will do that. All right. Sorry about that. A, a, a little bit more from Judge Parker, by the way, there in Tennessee. He said the chance that an officer could abuse the wide discretion given enforcing, enforcing obscenity laws is troubling, given an art form like drag that some would say purpose, purposefully challenges the limits of a society's norms. But that's what the First Amendment is all about. I, I, the right wing is trying to enforce a very homogenized uh, vision of this country and of human beings. And it is uh, disgusting, uh, dangerous. Make your own list of adjectives. Well, talk about dangerous. Uh, Governor Brad Little of Idaho signed a bill banning travel to help a minor seek an abortion. It calls for prison sentences of two to five years if you help a minor obtain an abortion across state lines without parental consent. So when a father knocks up his minor daughter, she may be forced to bear his child. And if you are preg a pregnant teen who miscarries while you're on an out-of-state trip, you may be deemed to have been trafficked in an abortion. Well, a lot of these laws against uh, medical care for trans youth include uh, prison sentences for anyone who provides that care, either uh, a friend or family member helping them to get to that care or a medical uh, professional who is providing that care. And so some of the, like the Florida uh, decision that overruled the law uh, banning uh, trans health care uh, for minors, which may be uh, expanded to uh, adults because adult trans people are also being uh, subjected to these bans now. Uh, but the Florida decision specifically takes away the criminal penalties for providing that care. Right. Let's go to Texas, which had a real hate fest this week. Yep. They're, not, they're not just uh, uh, preempting Houston, you've read a lot about this, on how they run their elections how they decide their elections, but they're about to join Tennessee and Arkansas in forbidding cities from banning discrimination based on sexual orientation and gender identity. They also want to preempt uh, stricter local environmental regulations, worker protections. They prohibit uh, cutting police budgets, and uh, they're banning DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion, at colleges. Um, they're also banned transition for minors as of September 1st. And Texas is, uh, uh, the governor signed the no treatment, medical treatment for trans youth bill. That will go into effect September 1st, unless uh, we can get a court to overturn it. Uh, they also banned drag, banned drag completely. 
not just minors, any kind of cross-dressing. Uh, well, that'll be an interesting uh, interpretation. Can I not wear pants in Texas? Uh, it's it's endless. All right. Uh, uh, we're not uh, just a little update. Uh, we are continuing to have technical problems with getting Martha Shelley on the air. So we're going to uh, reschedule her appearance. Uh, we will not be able to talk to her today. Okay. Sorry, Martha. Very sorry. sorry. She can't hear us, but we're sorry. Okay. All, All right. right. Uh, the Department of Defense uh, is also on the naughty list this week. Sorry, that's the first thing I thought of. Uh, div for several years, Nellis Air Force Base in Nevada has had a drag show that's become an annual event. And uh, under attack from right-wing uh, complainers, protesters, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin has backed down and canceled the drag show at uh, Nellis Air Force Base. Now, one of the people who was supposed to appear at that show, uh, a drag star Coco Mon Tro Montrese, Coco Montrese, excuse me, I've seen her on uh, RuPaul's Drag Race, I should have known that, uh, uh, was very angry about this and called uh, President Biden a coward uh, and said if he really wanted to uh, make up for it, he should have a drag show at the White House. Biden did issue a Pride Month uh, proclamation uh, saying the Stonewall rioters were courageous uh, uh, talked about the current attacks going on, pushes uh, uh, passage of the Equality Act, uh, lists both victories in his administration and challenges. But Coco was right. Hold a drag show at the uh, White House. You think the Stonewall people were courageous? Well, show a little courage yourself. Absolutely. Um, a lot of stories from uh, Florida. Uh, Transgender people are now being denied prescriptions for hormones that they've been getting for years. Um, on uh, DeSantis on the stump in, in Iowa claimed the military's use of preferred pronouns is to blame for a massive drop in recruitment. Well, the real reason is that fewer Americans of age are not are physically fit are not physically fit to serve. Um, so I, I got a bunch of other things from Florida. Uh, Lyman High School in the Seminole County Schools. They devoted two pages of the yearbook to the school's LGBTQ students, and they included such terms as gender fluid and non-binary. Moms for Liberty objected, and school, the school offered to issue refunds or reprint the year, yearbook without the LGBTQ pages. The faculty advisor to the yearbook objected to the censorship, and he resigned uh, from his job. Um, citing Florida's anti-LGBTQ political climate. Uh, the principal had already resigned because of the atmosphere uh, brought on by right-wing protesters all over the place. And uh, they have printed these yearbooks for several years with pages about all the clubs in the school and including the LGBTQ club. And that's been there for the last several years, but now Moms for Liberty has uh, gone wild on this and, and no more. No, uh, where are we going? Um, in well, let's go to California a little. Well, well, let's finish up in Florida. In okay. Orlando, there was a massive gay day celebration at the Walt Disney World's Magic Kingdom. Yes. The reservations were said to have come in slower, but uh, Rainbow-hued merchandise uh, sold briskly, including Mickey waving a rainbow flag. Uh, drag queen bingo was held. Uh, Taste of Gay Days, though, was scrapped because some of the restaurants got spooked by the backlash and they canceled. But I think this is a good lesson because Disney stood up to the hate early. Uh, and they uh, Actually, they came on later than most corporations and they still got punished. Well... But it they were the first to speak out against the Florida don't say gay law. And that fight started with DeSantis. And a lot of this uh, came from all of that. And instead of backing down, Disney doubled down and said, uh, we are not backing away from this. We're standing up for it. And we're going to uh, do everything in our power to stick with our support of the LGBTQ community. And they pulled off this Gay Days, and they're going to have this huge conference in, what is it, September or October. Uh, and they have survived. 
Uh, the com companies that are backing down are the ones that are getting themselves twisted in knots and having more trouble. Well, let's see if they survive their lawsuit. Disney is suing DeSantis over all this uh, yep. for retaliation, uh, for criticizing Don't Say Gay. The Obama-appointed judge in the case recused himself because some relative owns 30 shares of Disney stock. That's a little crazy. Um, something Clarence Thomas would never do. Uh, and he's been re replaced in the lawsuit by a Trump appointed judge. That was not, can't, doesn't have to be a bad thing, as we learned from the Tennessee. Case. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't give up on the Trump judges. Uh, and, and of course, we're very amused by what happened in Utah, where what we've been asking for, are they watching this show, uh, has happened. The Davis School District in Utah has removed the Bible from uh, elementary and middle schools because of a complaint from a parent who said, it, uh, it's too full of violence and sex. You must get the Bible out of the schools. Now, uh, vulgarity, violence, it's still in the high school, though. <laughs> well, I, I, I don't want to leave Florida. It was nice. It's nice to see DeSantis sinking in the polls not just in his pursuit of the Republican nomination, but on the issues. They did a big survey, a national survey, on how people feel about his main issues. Support for his no permit concealed carry with guns is at 22%. Uh, banning diversity, equity, and inclusion in colleges, 29%. Banning abortion at six weeks, 35%. Book banning, 34%. Banning CRT, gender studies and intersectionality at colleges, 36%. Arresting trans people in bathrooms who, you know, if they go into the one appropriate for their gender identity, 40% do favor that, but 43% oppose. And prohibiting preferred pronouns, um, well, he comes out okay on that, 43% favor and 40% oppose. But you know very well that well, you can have all these surveys of what people uh, believe, but then they go right ahead and vote for these uh, monsters. Uh, yes, because they vote on a cluster of their issues, even though it's not the majority of the things that they believe. Exactly. So you can read those surveys till you're blue in the face, but it's not really relevant to whether or not they're going to get uh, elected. And as, uh, as has been discussed this week, uh, DeSantis is running on a platform of anger, and that's what people want. And the actual details of the issues don't matter as much as his affect, and it's affect that really gets people elected. That's what got Trump elected in 2016, his affect. And well, now they may be tired of him, uh, but San DeSantis is uh, building a case for himself on that that approach. Well, Mike Pence is running as a Christian crusader. Um, on the He's eve of declaring the Republican nomination for president, he called the LA Dodgers deeply offensive for honoring the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence, citing having been raised in the Catholic Church. But hey, folks, Pence abandoned what Catholics like to call the one true faith uh, to become an evangelical Protestant. So who is more anti-Catholic, Pence? or the sisters. Uh, even I could talk you out of that uh, approach. He's allowed to be whatever religion he wants, and he can stand up for Catholics. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I stand up for uh, Catholic and evangelical uh, legitimate rights, uh, and we always have. And well, in addition to the Dodgers, the legislature of California is standing up for the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. Uh, they have... Uh, given an, uh, an award, a, yeah, they've honored uh, Sister Roma of the, the, she's the one in the middle <laughs> with yes. Tony Atkins, the out lesbian uh, speaker of the house, uh, president of the Senate, uh, maybe president of the Senate, Tony Atkins on the left mm -hmm. and Scott Weiner, uh, out gay member of the legislature on the right who proposed the honor for Sister Roma. Sister the right wing, Roma. of course, is freaking out about this. Sister Roma got a standing ovation in both houses. Yeah. Uh, Sister Roma joined the sisters in 1987 in, in San Francisco and has led an anti-violence campaign, promoted masks to combat COVID, fed the hungry, ministered to the sick, and supports LGBTQ youth. 
And the, the LA County supervisors uh, passed a couple of resolutions to support LGBTQ people in the face of all these attacks too, and and sort of reinforce the idea that they are not going to go along with any attempts to, uh, uh, you know, do right. bad things to us. Back to baseball for a second. Toronto Blue Jays pitcher Anthony Bass got booed out of the stadium by the hometown crowd after he posted on social media supporting the anti-LGBTQ boycotts of Target and Bud Light. He tried to apologize, saying he needed to better educate himself. And the Blue Jays manager, John Schneider, said, that's not going to let him off the hook. <laughs> uh, the Blue Jays hosted Pride events over the weekend. Uh, the only team in Major League Baseball not to host a Pride event is the Texas Rangers. I should have guessed that. Are we through with Florida? Uh, yes, I have more political stuff. Um, the uh, Back to Republicans, the loathsome Nikki Haley on CNN, and she did a little town hall, blamed trans girls in girls' locker rooms as the reason a third of our teenage girls seriously contemplated suicide last year. She cannot go much lower, uh, but she I'm sure she will. Um, you know, all the Republicans are, she might uh, want to look at how girls who think of taking their lives are affected by bullying and by mistreatment by cisgendered boys in relationships. I, I think uh, I like changing her name so that she is always referred to as the loathsome Nikki Haley. Uh, in Louisiana, we told you that a Senate committee had killed an anti-LGBTQ bill last week, but now the legislature has overruled that. In spite of the committee's vote, they have gone ahead and passed a bill for no medical care for trans youth uh, and a don't say LGBTQ bill and uh, no, no uh, preferred pronouns. A couple, of notes on, a couple of notes on George Santos. I know you miss him, uh, the pathetically criminal uh, uh, Long Island congressman. He posted that his flag is the American flag, referring to the rainbow flag as a false flag created by gay ink mafia. Now, press outlets that are, that are suing to find out who gave him the $500,000 to stay out of prison. The judge ordered that they have to reveal it. They haven't done it yet. He says, I would rather go to prison uh, then their names be known, be my guest. Well, let's see whether he follows through on it. The judge set a deadline, I think, at the end of this week for those names to be released. One can only imagine who it is who's uh, keeping him out of prison, uh, or, you know, keeping him in office for the moment. I'm, I'm on the edge of my seat. Uh, but I, I like the names you're making up for these people. What was it? Pathetically? Criminal. Criminal. Oh, good. Okay. In uh, West Hollywood, California, they held their pride event last week. And there, they, there were a bunch of cops who were supposedly doing security at this event. Well, they were wandering around the festival and laughing at uh, some of the booths and their displays, not in a supportive way. So some of the gay people say, uh, uh, go up to them and say, hey, come on, cut it out. Uh, this isn't here for your amusement. This is serious stuff. And what are you doing? Uh, three of them got arrested. Well, uh, in turn, another arrest, a prominent trans activist in New York City, Queen Jean, arrested in Greenwich Village during the Trans Revolution March on May 31st, along with several others. 60 trans rights activists had gathered in Washington Square Park for a rally. They were protesting the onslaught of anti-trans legislation across the country. Police announced that amplified sound devices were forbidden without a permit, including megaphones, and Queen Jean continued to use a bullhorn while marching on the sidewalk. Police moved to arrest her. She dashed into a deli, followed by cops and activists. Jean was arrested while her supporters demanded she be let go to no avail. Now, this is a law in New York City, which many of us have fallen prey to over the years at demonstrations. Uh, many of us know that you are, it is illegal to have uh, amplified sound without a permit. 
So sometimes we decide not to have a bullhorn and sometimes we get a permit for a bullhorn, but I don't see why someone with an unpermitted bullhorn has to be arrested. Uh, I can see them being given a ticket maybe if that's what you have to do. And God knows there are people using bullhorns that annoy me, but, uh, but to arrest her, uh, just, and as you saw, arrest her quite violently, uh, seems to be overreach. And there's a lot of, uh, talk that she was targeted ahead of time and they were just itching for a reason to, uh, grab her. The real, the real danger in New York, of course, is all these bicyclists riding on the sidewalk and going the wrong way on streets and knocking this over, uh, and killing us in some cases. And the police do nothing about that. But the New York City Council's LGBTQI caucus issued a really comprehensive plan on making the city better for us, for youth, the homeless, uh, for us older folks, and more. I'm going to link to it in our email. It's called the Marsha and Sylvia Plan. It's really comprehensive. And no matter where you live in the country, you might want to take a look at it because it, it gives you a lot of ideas about things that you could be advocating for where you live. Uh, I skimmed it. I didn't read it in total detail, but I didn't notice anything in there about school curricula. Uh, there was stuff about schools, yes. But, uh, uh, curricula? Uh, uh, bullying, yes. I didn't see anything about yes, curricula. They did. Yes, they did mention, uh, in fact, I remember they did mention the bill in Albany to mandate it. That seems to me should be a high priority. But then the Proud Boys come and uh, bust up your school. Uh, but also in New York, uh, City Hall and other municipal buildings will be lit up with rainbow uh, lights uh, uh, for Pride Month. Uh, I you know that all these fights over raising the rainbow flag and and uh, pri the lights and everything. Why can't uh, places, municipal buildings, whatever schools have a lot of flags? all the time sure let's have flags of many countries let's have flags of many issues uh well there are some we would probably not like to see flying certainly like uh you know the swastika well, flag we continue. could do without that you owe me a drink um uh, well the violence continues in detroit a uh, black trans woman ashia davis was killed gunned mm -hmm. down also known as asia davis also known as charm 34 years old, killed, killed at a Highland Park hotel. Surveillance video showed the suspect running from the scene. A memorial benefit for uh, her was, is being held uh, today as we're taping at the White Star Nightclub in Hamtramck. Hamtramck, I think. Okay. But maybe I'm wrong. No. Viewers, tell us which is right, Hamtrack or Hamtramck? Well, it's not Amtrak. No, it is not. This is a very serious thing. And uh, obviously, had, obviously had a lot of friends uh, who were there. You know, these these people are very connected to the community. And, uh, you know, we practically tell you every other week about one of them being murdered. All right. A few uh, good notes. Uh, in California, the International Brotherhood of Teamsters and two locals of the union uh, declared their first Pride Celebration sponsorship. Uh, it's, I'm surprised it's their first, but uh, great to have unions uh, climbing on board uh, with support. Uh, and in fact, one of the um, big points in Martha Shelley's book, of course, is about allies and us being allies to others and others being allies to us and uh, great to have the Teamsters support. Um, in uh, Minnesota, there is a settlement over a case involving a trans woman in prison. Uh, Christina Lusk had uh, been placed in a men's prison. She is a trans woman. Uh, objected to that for a long time. Finally sued about it, reached a settlement, is now in a women's prison and received uh, $495,000 in a settlement. Uh, and I also want to uh, take a moment to celebrate uh, Congressman, retiring Congressman David Cicilline, who's stepping away from Congress uh, to run the Rhode Island Foundation in his 
home state where he used to be the mayor of Providence. He's done a lot of great work in the Congress uh, for LGBTQ people as an out gay man. Uh, very the mayor of Providence. Yeah, very forthright, very straightforward, very, uh, you know, outspoken on the issues. Uh, I'm sorry we're losing him from Congress. That's a big loss. Uh, uh, especially when the, the margins are so tight in the uh, in the Congress. I mean, I, I kind of wish he'd hung in there at least till the end of his term. Uh, yeah. Because, uh, well, they, they will replace him in November uh, while uh, George Santos is in prison. Uh, Elon Musk... We don't often mention Elon Musk on this program. Well, we he, talked about him having a trans daughter who he, who he is alienated from. Yeah. Well, here's one reason why. He has uh, allowed Twitter to post a video. His staff tried to stop it. He overruled them. This is a video called What is a Woman? And it is a transphobic documentary. Uh, the head of his trust and safety uh, operation at Twitter quit over this, uh, and so did others on the staff. They have walked out. They've said, "This, that's it. No more. Not having anything to do with him." Well, um, you know, I mean, uh, he's he's all these monsters have money. I mean, look what happened to the PGA Tour this week. They were taken over by the anti-gay uh, country of Saudi Arabia. I, it's, you know, you and I love golf. Uh, I'm disinclined to watch it anymore. Uh, well, I, I will play it because that has nothing to do with these people. But uh, uh, the this Monaghan, the head of the PGA, just is a hypocrite and a liar and a greedy son of a you know what. Uh, he just he told the PGA players a year ago. Don't go with the Saudi operation. Stay loyal to the PGA. You've never had to apologize for playing for the PGA. And now, a year later, he's sold out completely to the Saudi. And I was glad to see in some of the commentary they were raising things like, you know, this is, you know, this is a place where they murder LGBTQ people with the death penalty, uh, and literally. And it's so that that's in the mix. I mean, and when you raise this with the players who have already gone to the Saudi tour, uh, some of the big players, they go like, oh, but they're, you know, yeah, well, they're, they're, they're changing. This is about them changing. No, it's about what they call sports washing, of trying to buffer their image. It's just completely dispiriting and ugly. Well, and now the players who've stayed with the PGA are in a bad position because uh, they don't want to play for the Saudis, but what do they do? Uh, they Start a new tour, which is what they did before. What? Start a new tour. Yes. Well, they get to vote on this. The PGA Players Council has to vote on this when they come up with an actual plan, because all they have is a sort of theoretical framework at the moment. And it would be just fantastic if they voted it down and said, no, we are not doing this. You blindsided us. You're trying to put us in a terrible position. We're not going to do it. And I'm also worried about the LPGA because they have flirted with the idea of uh, joining the getting money from the Saudis because they need it a lot more than the PGA does. And I've already uh, written a note to the head of my chapter of the LPGA amateurs and said, we have got to get on this right now. And the chapters have to uh, unify and tell the LPGA we don't want them to do this. I want to talk about somebody else we lost this week, Anita Cornwell, a groundbreaking Philadelphia black lesbian feminist writer. She's died at the age of 99. Uh, she's credited as the first black woman writer to identify as a lesbian in print in the 1950s, writing for both The Ladder, uh, a lesbian publication, and Negro Digest, uh, later publishing her groundbreaking essay collection, Black Lesbian in White America in 1983. She died in Germantown, Pennsylvania, surrounded by the compassionate woman, women who cared for her, uh, her literary executor said. We will link to her obit in the Philadelphia Inquirer because it gives you a lot more. She was a founder of the local chapter of Radical Lesbians, which is a group that Martha Shelley belonged to in 1971. There's an online memorial scheduled in September 21st and an in-person one on September 30th. The information is in the article. 
Courageous groundbreaker. Uh, really amazing. All right. Uh, shall we move on to international news? Yes. Okay. Who's, who's running Latvia now? <laughs> A gay guy. <laughs> The new president of Latvia is uh, the out gay Edgars Rinkovic. I'm making up that pronunciation. Uh, he was selected by parliament. He has been proudly out since 2014. Uh, he, uh, Latvia has legal same-sex partnerships, uh, has a non-discrimination law that covers uh, sexual orientation and gender identity for employment and housing and a law against hate speech. It's very encouraging. Not encouraging uh, is Italy, where much of the uh, world is, well, while much of the world is celebrating LGBTQ Pride Month this, this uh, month, the country's neo-fascist Giorgia Maloney, the prime minister, has made June Family Pride Month, and you better believe that does not include non-traditional families. Well, uh, governments in Italy are like the weather in San Francisco. Wait six months and it'll change. Uh, in Mexico. Hmm? Especially in Italy. Yeah. Uh, in Mexico, they have now agreed that passports can have a non-binary X as your gender marker. In Iran, the majority of trade unions and notable social activists published a charter that demands the immediate removal of all forms of discriminatory structure against sexual minorities and people with gender nonconforming identities, recognizing LGBTQI rights and decriminalizing them. This is from the opposition in the country. Some right-leaning groups are also that are outside of the country. I mean, these groups are inside the country. Even some right-leaning groups outside the country are coming out for LGBTQ rights. But, you know, apparently Tehran in the 70s was considered a decent place to be gay. Well, we only have about uh, six minutes left, and I want to save time for Taylor Swift. So let's okay. hop to it. Okay. Uh, uh, the, in uh, Israel, they held the Jerusalem Pride Parade. It went off okay. Uh, although threatened by Iranian militants uh, who wanted to murder people. In Thailand, the leading candidate for prime minister has promised marriage rights and joined the pride parade. Uh, and, Uganda, and, another, and another district in Japan ruled uh, against Japan's ban on same-sex marriage. And uh, South Korea, marriage bill has been introduced in the National Assembly. Uh, the U.S. is considering restricting visas for Uganda government officials over their kill the gays bill. And uh, the World Bank announced it's opposed to it, too. And, I have a couple of other and things. The UK, South African political analyst uh, Eusebius McKaiser has died at 44, described as adamantly progressive, openly gay and politically fearless. Uh, since we're running out of time, I'm just going to say I will link to his obituary as well. He was a real uh, uh, trailblazer over there uh, in uh, South Africa. Uh, all right, moving. Do you have any AIDS or medical news? Uh, well, uh, how do you feel about the new CDC head, Mandy Cohen? Don't know enough. Okay. Uh, in entertainment news, the uh, cover of the new New Yorker is a picture of Sasha Velour by Sasha Velour, and inside is an interview with Sasha Velour. I think she it's was the winner of the ninth season of RuPaul's Drag Race, uh, has an MFA from the, for the Center for Cartoon Studies in Vermont. She said, drag is the antidote to shame. It is pure entertainment, freedom, and joy. It should be for everyone. Children should be introduced to it, not shielded from it. Well, I think that's a striking cover. So congratulations to her. Uh, uh, ABC ran a special an hour, The Freedom to Exist, uh, largely about Elliot Page and other trans people. It's now running on Hulu. Uh, you can catch it there. But the big event of the week was Taylor Swift on her huge, biggest ever concert tour. And in the middle of the, tour, the uh, performance, she halts her performance and does this. I'm looking out tonight, I'm seeing so many incredible, just 
individuals who are living authentically and beautifully. And this is a safe space for you. This is a, this is a celebratory space for you. I'm counting this as my first Taylor Swift moment. And one of the things that makes me feel so prideful is getting to be what? with you and watching you interact with each other, being so loving and so thoughtful and so caring. And so being with you during Pride Month, getting to getting to sing the words to You Need to Calm Down, where there are lyrics like, can you just not step on his gown? Or shade never made anybody less gay. And you guys are screaming those lyrics. In such solidarity, in such support of one another, in such encouraging, beautiful acceptance and peace and safety. And I wish that every place was safe and beautiful for people in the LGBTQ community. I really wish that. Because, you know, we can't talk about pride without talking about pain. They're, they're right now, and recently, and in the recent years, there have been so many harmful pieces of legislation that have put people in the LGBTQ and queer community at risk. It's painful for everyone, every ally, every loved one, every person in these communities, and that's why I'm always posting, this is when the midterms are. This is when these, these important key primaries are. Because we can support as much as we want during Pride Month, but if we're not doing our research on these elected officials, are they advocates? Are they allies? Are they protectors of equality? Do I want to vote for them? I love you guys so much and happy Pride Month. Wow. She's the best campaigner of all. And in 2020, she had an enormous effect on the election, getting young people out to vote and bringing that progressive message. And it is just, it's thrilling to see her continue to do this because she is a powerful, powerful figure. Do it again harder, Taylor. Do it again. <laughs> I think um, she's, yes, she's doing that at every one of her uh, concert appearances, oh. I believe. And you can go to YouTube and listen to You Better Calm Down or You Gotta Calm Down. It's a really good song. And we all have our part to play. Speaking of plays, if you have tickets to Grey House on Broadway, cover your ears now. Okay. Uh, look, I love Laurie Metcalf there on the right, but this play doesn't know if it wants to be funny or chilling, and it's unfortunately neither. Okay. And uh, unfortunately, we did not get to hear from Martha Shelley today, but we will fix that technical problem and bring her to you as soon as we can. Uh, her new book yeah, Chris is Cooper next week and Mary yeah, Johnson. Chris, Chris Cooper and I'm off for a couple of weeks, uh, but then I'll be back and have a great time without me, Andy. I, I will miss you, Anne. <laughs> have a wonderful trip. Thank you. I'm trying to get away from these uh, wildfire clouds. Just awful. It's all over the country. All right. So Andy, you'll be back next week with Marin. Thank you. Okay.